hello and welcome back and today I want to continue talking about PCIe Gen 4 M2 SSDs right now in 2021. This is the fourth part of a series of videos where I am looking at basically the fastest M2 NVMEs out there and comparing them against it. And of course, as mentioned in the other videos, right now the score to beat is the Seagate Firecuda 530. We've talked about it, compared it so far against Samsung 980. We compared it against WD Black. We compared it against the MSI Spatium, Spartium, whatever it is, M480. But today I want to talk about one brand that came out of nowhere. I didn't think I'd even heard of this brand as much as two or three years ago. And now in terms of SSD and certainly in the prosumer market, they are exploding. They are Sabrent. Sabrent have been around for a while and the Sabrent Rocket Plus, very important to make sure you get the plus there, is their newest generation PCIe Gen 4x4 SSD. Now I mentioned the PCIe Gen 4x4 being important but not as much as the plus the reason being that the Sabrent rocket is available in two variants there's the standard Sabrent rocket and the Sabrent plus now the plus is very important one because of the changes in the NAND profile that it utilizes two because of the profile of the controller needless to say it is the E18 the insanely powerful insanely fast E18 from Fuzz on the E18 PS5018, something we've talked about in previous videos, something that is also featured on the Firecuda 530. And of all the drives that I've talked about so far in my comparisons, I gotta say, the Sabrent Rocket Plus is the one that I think gives the Seagate Firecuda 530 probably the biggest run for its money in terms of what you're getting for your money. It has arrived on the market for as long as pretty much anyone else, indeed. When the Samsung 980 Pro hit the market and was really making waves midway through last year in 2020, despite the pandemic, despite the semiconductor shortages, despite the trade war, despite Chia starting to rise up out of the gloomy depths, Sabrent's Rocket Plus drive still had an avid following behind it. Now, the Rocket Plus, uh, sorry, the Rocket was last year, the Rocket Plus was originally kind of revealed and released uh, in spring of this year, 2021, arrives in a very similar architecture to that of the Firecuda 530. So before we go and talk about what's different overall between them, let's talk a little bit about what they've got in common. Because as I mentioned, very, very similar architecture. They're both PCIe Gen 4 SSDs. It has to be said Gen 4 times 4. For those that aren't aware, PCIe Gen 4 times 4 allows a bandwidth of 8,000 megabytes per second. And although none of the SSDs right now can give you the full 8,000, they get pretty darn close. Just remember, the bandwidth is the pipe, is the interface, in this case, PCIe Gen 4 times 4 um, of our M2 connector. And the water that would go through that pipe, otherwise known as throughput, generally measured in read and writes, on both of these drives is very similar as well, although there are disparities along the way. I hate seagulls. Also, they both take advantage of 3D NAND TLC, which is great because it's a good balance between durability and capacity and performance. But I will highlight that although they both use the same controller, the fires on E18, again, beautiful stuff, they don't actually use the same NAND. With the uh, Sabrent drive, the Rocket Plus taking advantage of 96 layer NAND, remember, vertically stacked, um, whereas the Firecuda 530, 176 layer NAND. And that was something that was raised in a bunch of websites. The fact that Sabrent Rocket Plus seemingly got the E18, but then decided not to go all in on that NAND. And that is where the later disparity throughout this comparison will go. So do remember that about that NAND because I think it plays a big, big part. Um, and although both of them arrive uh, with five years of manufacturer's warranty, it is also worth highlighting that um, the Seagate, once again, the 530 arrived with data recovery services included. And although they are pretty much the only brand that includes it, I don't think they get enough heat for that. I know I talk about it a lot and I'm sure I'm boring you to tears. But still, nonetheless, the fact that it includes data recovery services that I've personally tested in the past with a smashed up drive, the idea that if you are a content creator and you're working on an edit and you've got a corrupted drive or the interface or a power surge or any one of a number of things, accidental deletion, malware, ransomware, you name it, having those three years of included data recovery services is not to be sniffed at. And then anyone that's ever had to pay for professional data recovery services, man alive, it can be expensive. Because remember, it's a bit-by-bit bit recovery, forensic level in many cases as well. 
So it's always worth highlighting that the Seagate Firecuda 530 arrives with it because I don't think it gets enough props because it's just not something the other drive brands have and it ends up just falling into one of those extras and things that gets thrown around like the CD in an external drive. Who needs that? Um, and of course, both of these drives arrive with very similar capacities that we'll talk about in a bit. And I'm pleased to say they both arrive in four terabytes, which again, four terabytes on a little NVMe, particularly a 2280 length SSD. None of the 22110 full length, those massive NVMe's. This is a standard length, still able to take advantage of 4TB. So well done, both of you. Just great stuff to see there. And of course, they do that thanks to using double-sided. Uh, double so that's another word, the NAND cells are on either side of the NVMe M2 PCB board, along with, of course, uh, the DDR4 memory, that little bit of RAM there, the SD RAM, and, of course, the controller. So they've got a lot in common, which is going to be super weird later in the video when we start talking about the disparity between them in terms of their overall performance, their durability, the IOPS, because you'd think for two drives that are damn similar that they would be a lot more similar than indeed they are. They're both high-performing drives. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, there's a number of ways in which the Sabrent Rocket Plus really does give kind of Seagate, the giant that is Seagate, a bit of a run for their money. Um, one area where it's really hard to compare these two brands is price. Once you look at these two drives, they both arrive with 500 gig models, 1 TB models, 2 TB models, and 4 TB models. But the prices are near enough impossible to track. And that's because both of these drives have arrived into spring, summer 2021. Uh, and again, we're not looking at the Rocket. We're looking at the Rocket Plus. Very important to distinguish the difference there. We could have compared the Firecuda 520 versus the, uh, the Rocket, but we didn't, and here we are. But the price between them there's no rhyme or reason, notwithstanding currency differences between them. And this isn't just utilizing Amazon. This is utilizing a number of different websites, a number of different websites that take advantage of the uh, uh, recommended retail price, RRP. But whichever way you look at it, all of them, there's like advantages left, right and center. And in many websites, I'm talking about uh, for the US there, we are talking about Newegg, Walmart, Amazon, those sort of easy, everyone knows them shops. Their prices are all over the place. And over here in the UK, we've got the likes of scan and um, e-buyer and all that kind of stuff all of these prices there's no consistent there's no rhyme or reason and i would argue that it, there's a good chance that you can get these two drives in every single capacity tier at largely the same price and when i looked around for the 4tb model the sabrent rocket plus which is available remember that it is available and it's been around and available to buy for longer than the fire cuda it's seemingly more expensive for the 4TB model, despite all the stuff we're going to go through in a little bit. So again, I can't really say that one is more affordable than the other for the simple reason that there is no consistency on the price that we can go, yes, as of five and a half seconds ago on these nine websites, one of those is more expensive. So in terms of price, I'm just going to have to call it a draw. We're not going to be out. We can't distinguish between them in terms of capacity because they're both available. And we can't really give one an advantage or another. Even the prices I've shown you on screen have almost certainly changed between the time I've made this video and you're watching it. So I'm leaving it there as a guide. But to be perfectly frank, it's not that reliable. So we have to move away from price and move away from price point and into value we have to talk about what we get for our money and i think this is where the tides change and once again as we've seen already the firecuda 530 seemingly using reported stats of course continues this kind of real carpet bomb approach to those specifications so first and foremost we can talk about traditional read and write sequential read and write so sequential meaning files all laid out appropriately rather than just random access um overall the Firecuda wins, 530 wins, but not by massive amounts. It's It's got an advantage, and it's certainly given, you know, the difference between them, in some cases, 300 megabytes per second. Uh, the difference is very, very clear. But look at the 500 gig model, and yes, I'm looking at my notes, but look at the 500 gig model between the two of them. The 500 gig Firecuda 530 is a drive that I have ragged on in the previous videos. I touched on that, I think... Of all of the drives in that series, I'd love to know why the 500 gig model has such weird disparity in its specifications. Now, 
if we compare that against the Sabrant Rocket Plus, their 500 gig model, which is really, really important because 500 gig is your entry point. And if you are someone that's using it for editing and you're using 4K or 1080p, you can probably get away with um, 500 gig. If you're buying these for uh, NAS caching, 500 gig is probably where you're going to go. And although a lot of gamers on the consoles aren't going to consider 500 gig, given the preset console storage, I think a lot of PC gamers, even semi-professional gamers, are going to look at the 500 gig model as a viable option. Half a gig for the core files on a handful of games that may be streaming or creating content for YouTube or streaming on Twitch or whatever. 500, 500 gig is pretty good. And the 500 gig model on the Sabrent Rocket Plus it's surprisingly performing. It's 7,000 over 5,500. Very close to the 1TB performance promoted by Seagate in the Fire Cuda series. Once again, I get it. And, uh, you know, this round is Seagate's. They've won this one. They have stormed it. They are definitely winning this one because three out of the four drives completely trounce the Sabrent. But I say trounce. They, they, they're ahead. But given Sabrent and Seagate... I think even a quick look at Wikipedia would show the dwarfing nature between these two companies. So Brent is part of a chain of companies, sure, but Seagate is the monster here. You know, they are the, the they are the Goliath, and so Brent, theory, you know, comparatively, is David in Randy's Little Rocks. So, of course, the Fire Cuda 530 is the better drive here in terms of performance, in terms of sequential read and write, but you've got to give Sir Brent the Rocket Plus a little bit of kudos there. Kudos to unfortunately is going to fall by the wayside a little bit once we move into the IOPS there. So to check, the IOPS on the Sabrent Rocket Plus are weirdly lower than I expected. Now, I should explain. IOPS are individual out, uh, in, input output operations per second. These is effectively the latency. It's the responsiveness. It's how many things it can deal with, how many instructions it can deal with per second. Now, pretty much all of the top tier PCIe Gen 4 times 4 SSDs. I'm looking at your Samsung 980 Pros. I'm looking at your WD Blacks. They've broken the 1 million um, IOPS mark. In some cases, like the 530, in both read and write. The Sabrent Rocket Plus peaks at 700. It doesn't go any higher than that. And particularly in the early, like 350, 650, I was really surprised that the IOPS were as low as they were. Now, I will repeat, as I've said in previous videos, I don't rate IOPS as a measurement in modern consumer, uh, consumer SSDs. Certainly, when they were, when, if they're used in um, at smaller operations or if they are being used for high-end OS or for a virtual machine or if you are um, streaming live and you aren't running for a third server or a third-party server pathway, then that is very, very important. But the importance of ISOs has depreciated in recent years as SSDs have become the de facto storage medium and IOPS have continued to excel into the hundreds of thousands and now even the millions to a point where their advantages are being bottlenecked by the very systems they are contained within. But nonetheless, I'm still very surprised that Sir Brent Rocket is chuffing out IOPS there that although better than PCIe Gen 3 alternatives aren't massively better and certainly comparable to the previous non-plus gem and of course as mentioned the fire cuda 530 there it's, bracket, it's breaking the one mil um uh, iop there you've got to give it to them and they've absolutely stormed it there so you've got to give in terms of those iop performance figures uh sega and the fire cuda 530 take it but what's really interesting and this goes back to my earlier point the fire cuda and the sabrent having such similar architecture with the same controller the same capacity limits readily available um and the same nvme uh firmware uh, revision i would argue that the drive rights per day difference and again this has to be down to the layers of that nand the drive rights per day are the ultimate uh, that along with terabytes written the ultimate measurement of the endurance of a drive is largely eclipsed uh, on the Sabrent Rocket Plus by the Fire Cuda 530, with 0.4 drive rights per day reported on the Sabrent Rocket Plus, and 0.7 drive rights per day reported on the Fire Cuda 530. An enormous disparity between them. And fair play to the Rocket Plus. All the other drives I've talked about here on the channel so far have largely all been 0.3, and I'm talking Samsung and WD. These are in house. Um, SSD manufacturing and R&D 
companies. They've got their own custom controllers. They've got their own custom NAND manufacturer. It's incredibly first party. And for Sir Brent Rocket Plus to still be able to waltz in and exceed their drive rights per day at this price point is pretty impressive. And even though, of course, it loses to the Fire Cuda 5Z, you've got to give them points for, you know, standing up a little bit too. I'm making Sabren Rocket seem like some two-bit company. They aren't. They're massive. They're just not Seagate massive. And when it comes down to buying a super uh, performance SSD right now, of course I'm going to recommend the Fire Cuda 530. It wins overall in terms of durability. It wins in terms of performance read and write, in terms of IOPS and that latency figure there, in terms of the data recovery services, and all thanks to the higher end and more enterprise architecture found on every one of those tiny little M2s. But still, nonetheless, if you see the Sabrent Rocket Plus at a decent little price, if you see it on offer, like on Black Friday or Prime Day, or just generally on offer somewhere, don't dismiss it because I think of all the drives I've talked about, the Rocket Plus is one that's really caught people unawares. And even though we have talked about some of the um, the Corsair, MSI and A-Data ones a little bit so far and we will be covering them in due course, I would argue that right now the Sabrent Rocket Plus is the one that surprised a lot of people in it's coming out of relative nowhere and challenging pretty much all of the big guns in this industry. And I think that on its own is worthy of respect, even if it doesn't quite topple the monster behemoth SSD that is the Fire Cuda 530. Thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, do let me know in the comments and click like if you have. It helps me understand. Other than that, click subscribe if you want to learn more about this kind of stuff or the next part in this series. And of course, do take advantage of the free advice section over on NAS Compares. It's one click, it's down there below, and it will allow me and Eddie the web guy to answer your queries and help you get the right data storage product for your needs be it a massive server a photo video editing rig or just upgrading your gaming rig it's completely free just use the service it takes a couple of days to get back to you because we we have lives but we answer every email thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time